It's hard to find the right kind of Torah to share in this scenario. I happen to have been preparing remarks for the anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, which unfortunately bring to forward Torah, which is unfortunately resonant and repeating itself for this moment. I shared a story of my Rosh Yeshiva, Rabbi Yehuda Amital. Rabbi Amital was not only the head of a yeshiva, a Hezder yeshiva, which sends boys to the army and which lost many young men in the Yom Kippur War, but he himself was also a Hungarian Holocaust survivor, a survivor of labor camps, whose family all perished in the Holocaust. And one of the things that he shares in his reflection on the Yom Kippur War is a very strange position that is voiced originally by Nachmanides, which is that one is not meant to eulogize those who are killed by the non-Jewish authorities. Now, Nachmanides lives in a time after the violence of the Crusades, when Jews live under the thumb of Christianity. And there's a fear that if you eulogize someone who was executed by the authorities, that perhaps vengeance would be taken up, uh, out on the mourners, vengeance would be taken out of the one who voiced the eulogy, and so you had to protect it. Rav Amital points out that by the time Jewish law gets codified, this position of not eulogizing those who were who are executed or slaughtered by the non-Jews is not codified. It's rejected. In fact, we do eulogize them. But Rav Amital offers his own reflection with these words. He says, however, when I had to eulogize one friend and then another and then another, Hashem yimkom damam, may God avenge their blood, I felt doubts. This is, of course, remarks he's making about his experience in the Holocaust. Rav Amital says, we are moving from the pain of an individual to the pain of the community. So how can I come to eulogize one in individual amongst the collective of all those who have fallen, all of whom merited the highest levels, and no one can compare to them? And I should speak of one person? It seems to me that here I understood the Ramban's approach. How is it, is, how is it possible to say, where is the righteous one? Where is the humble one? Those are expressions of eulogy about how humble or how righteous a person was. So he says, how is it possible to say, where is the righteous one? Where is the humble one? When together with him were killed so many, all of whom were righteous and all of whom were humble. Even so, the halacha does not follow the Ramban. And my mind settled. Meaning, his point is that every single person needs to be focused upon, not as a collective, but as an individual. We need to remain connected to the individual stories. We need to continue to humanize it to ourselves, our families, to our colleagues. People have to understand the faces and the names, the men, the women, the children, the grandmothers, the grandfathers who were hurt and slaughtered and captured. I'm going to share with you a video it was shared with me by Nachi Paris. It's, it shows, at least to me, a little bit of this special window of the individual. Here we see that even as they are singing the Kel Male Rachamim for one soldier, <clears throat> they're digging the grave to be able to bury the next. <laughs> This is a society in mourning 
on a scale where where we are threatened to just look at collective. But every one of these graves is dug by hand. Every one of these people is connected to so many others. It is incumbent upon us to remember that. It is incumbent upon us to tell their stories. And I'll just end with the story which is closest to all of Vancouver. Ben Mizrahi, a young man who went to King David High School, who went to Vancouver Hebrew Academy, who grew up in this community, who played with our children, who was friends with our children. His last moments, his friend, he was running, in, he was at that music festival and he was running away. And his friend took two bullets. So Ben, instead of running away, he ran to the ambulance and grabbed the medic's kit because he was a medic when he served in the IDF. And he went to treat his friend and he wouldn't leave his friend. He was a third friend with them. And that friend escaped and told this story. And to my knowledge, the last picture we have of Ben is Ben with a first aid kit over his shoulder. He's ducking behind a uh, four-wheel drive vehicle. And he's clearly next to a friend who's been injured. And we, our last image is of this young man who made the choice to save other people above saving his own skin. He's our story. But there are literally a thousand more. Not just like him. Similar but each one its own individual story. It's our job to stay connected.